Hey, this is Shasta Everhart, and this is Speak Live Nation. Hello, welcome to Speak Live Nation. I'm your host, Cedric Nettles. I have a very inspirational young lady here on the show today. She's the fourth black woman to be um, on her tour card on the LPGA tour. And um, she's here with us. Her name is Shasta Averhart. How are you doing today, Shasta? I'm good, Cedric. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, you know, we talked earlier about your, your, your moment when you got that tour card and what was involved as far as your emotions and everything. Can you give the audience what was going through your mind when you finally earned that card? Um, I, gosh, I was trying to relive it right now. Um, I was very nervous. Uh, I could not stop shaking because um, it was something that I worked so hard for. And um, as a tour player, you know that you go through LPGA qualifying school, you make it to the final round. It's you know do or die. You either get your tour card or you don't. And so making mm-hmm. that final putt uh, was a huge sigh of relief. And um, I had some friends there, and I just broke down emotionally. Um, but it was a good you know, type of emotion. It was just emotions that were coming out from hard work and sacrifice and, and just drive to, to, get to, to get to that moment. Yeah, and that's awesome. And, you know, we talked earlier about how you, it really didn't hit you until the articles start coming out. And what, what I find what people I like to cover with Speak My Nation, they, they have so much passion for what they do. They're like, I'm getting an award for this. <laughs> you know, you just, you just, you know, you're just happy that you're doing what you love to do. And then when, when you get a recognition, it just kind of catches you off guard. Or well, was that the case with you? It did catch me off guard because um, I really never looked at it as uh, I'm a black woman playing golf. Um, mm-hmm. I looked at it as, as I was a woman playing golf. And so um, once all this attention started coming around, I was very overwhelmed. And um, I, I hired a uh, agency to help me, you know, manage a lot of opportunities that are coming my way. And I think one day, uh, it was after rookie orientation, um, I came back home and I just sat there and then just stared at the floor. I was happy. It was just the fact that everything was just happening at one time. And it was definitely um, overwhelming, like I said, and the race factor came to be more so in 2011 when I got to the highest level. Mm-hmm. And which is quite amazing for anyone. I don't care. Male, female, black or white. That's a high, high level of golf. Because, you know, I play Tiger Woods golf on the video game systems. I have at least <laughs> three different versions. And that's hard enough. You know, I, I won, but the, the skill set has to be there. And if you're having a bad day, your mind is like all over the place stuff you're going to miss that drive or you're going to miss that approach so i can't imagine imagine what you went through as far as the stress levels um, doing that that's pretty amazing yeah thank you and you know and i was looking back on the video game systems I, um, I think i asked you earlier were you actually in the game you know i know you remember me asking you that you know actually in the video game i was thinking about when i placed myself in that video game they put me up there with a jerry girl <laughs> I'm sitting there with a Jerry girl. Like, I, 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 it's just awkward looking at myself. I got a Jerry girl. So I stopped playing that version. But well, thankfully, they, they stepped their game up in the graphics, and I enjoy it. And I, um, I definitely have mad respect for golfers out there. It's not easy. So can you describe what was your training like um, in route to your tour card? What was that like for you? Um, you know. <laughs> It honestly started at the age of seven, to, to be quite frank. Um, it was just years of repetition and, and learning to un- learning the game, um, understanding how to play the game. And um, I think in prepar- preparation for uh, LPJ qualifying school, um, I definitely had a routine. Um, Every morning I would wake up, and this was after I graduated college, um, because I already knew what I wanted to do. Uh, So when I moved to Florida, um, I began working at a golf course um, on top of playing on many tour events. And so I was juggling a lot. And one thing that kept me 
uh, motivated and my energy levels up was creating a dream board. And um, I, I put anything and everything that I wanted and needed um, on the dream board. And so when I wake up in the morning, I would look right at it. And I would just it was just like a healthy reminder of why I'm doing this and uh, mm. why I'm up at 5 a.m. heading to the golf course. And so uh, when I finally realized I needed to quit my job at the golf course to focus solely on golf, um, my routine, my daily routine um, was extended and I was able to get to the golf course, hit golf balls, uh, work on my short game, um, go play as many holes as I wanted to, um, work with my coach, uh, do a lot mm -hmm. of drills, um, just honing in on my technique and routine. I mean, pre-shot routine was, is very important and was very important, especially when you're under pressure because you revert back to what's comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have a sloppy routine uh, while you're practicing, it's going to come out while you're playing. And mm -hmm. so uh, for three months um, in preparation for final stage, I was definitely on a grind. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting you say that because you have to remind yourself of why you do what you do. You know, of course, I'm, I'm not an athlete. Um, I'll be a professional athlete, but I am going to film and and doing all these other things. But I have to get up earlier myself to be able to do the things to get it out of the way. And it's a discipline. It's a constant discipline, and it's diligence. And uh, I'm I'm glad you said that. So that, um, you know, we have a lot of young kids that are going to be listening to this. That a lot of times you can have talent, but if you don't have the diligence to drive and hone that talent, you know, you, you may not reach your potential. And I'm glad you mentioned how what it really truly takes. Um, to make higher levels, so I definitely commend you on that. Thank you. I I appreciate that. Yeah, it was. Um, it's definitely just keeping my head down and just kind of staying focused on, you know, the simple goals and just eliminating distractions. I definitely eliminated distractions at least for that the three months. Mhm. Mm and uh, speaking of youth, you know, you spoke. We spoke earlier about. Um, of course, the minority youth taking on golf and mm -hmm. taking an interest in it as a, another outlet for you know for them to go on. Uh, could you what what do you have to say about you know your personal support towards that? What would you like to see happen to bring that about? Um, well, I was uh, I was just talking to one of my friends the other day that grew up um, with me in Flint, Michigan, and we both play the Flint Inner City Golf Program, and we had a lot of minority kids in that program, um, and I think the difference from then uh, to today is social media, and how social media has, has in there, it's, it's huge, and it brings awareness to situations that people really don't know exist, and so... Mm -hmm. Now I do see, of course, I see a lot of minority kids getting involved with the game of golf, but I feel Good. like it started a long time ago. It's just now people are, more people are aware. And um, I think it's great because it's just having the opportunity and the chance to pursue something that you might have a passion for, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm go back to the video games because once you play in a video game, and you see yourself winning, and you see yourself improving, you're like, I got to try this. And, you know, and I had to get past the blisters, you know, putting the death grip on that, that on the grip, not knowing any better. And you have mm -hmm. to go through the fundamentals, but but once you once you get into it, if you, you can, it's a game you can easily get hooked on. It really, truly is. And, you know, this spring, hopefully I can get on the driving range, get, get, get a coach, kind of show me what I'm doing wrong. I don't have to try to kill the ball and that kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah. I like to say, <laughs> you know, guys, oh yeah, I'm gonna tag this ball, you know, hit 300 yards with a sandwich and that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> but but uh, kids, really, I would like to see kids in general just try to think outside of the box as far as them um, maybe taking on other skill sets and other sports because you never know what you can run into and what you're going to be passionate about. I'd love to see that. Yes, absolutely. So, um, are there any specific groups that you are supporting now that you want to blast out there to get awareness on right now? 
Um, yeah, well, right now, um, I just began volunteering at the first tee of Tampa Bay. Uh, mm-hmm. I realized I lived relatively close um, to the facility, and um, I they have... Um, actually, they have two locations, but one of the locations that I do live near, um, I was, uh, they have a lit driving range, and so right now with my job, I work a lot of hours, um, and during, well, right now we're in busy season, so we do work over 40 hours right now, and so I will go to the golf course, or to the range, excuse me, um, after work at like 8 o'clock at night and I was looking one day and I was like the first tee is here why don't you get involved and so um, I've gone so far and I really like it I like that they have core values that they established um, to these young kids um, at an early age and uh, so far it's been very enjoyable so yeah I definitely um, support uh, that organization and um, yeah it's kind of organization that I'm involved with right now. And uh, looking back on your career as far as, um, you know, you tasted being a part of that tour um, in your career, do you ever think about going back or you figure that maybe that's just a chapter you're just keeping closed or you think about going back, that, that bug hits you again? Uh, yes, that it definitely, um, I definitely think about it a lot more now um when I decided to stop playing it was I just felt like I ran out of time and I needed to do something else because the passion wasn't there anymore Mm. and so um yeah that was that because a lot of people were wondering like why accounting uh why are you working at Pricewaterhouse Coopers and I just it was hard for me to explain I hated golf at that time and it was because it was just a combination of a lot of things that happened over the years that just built up and I was just felt so defeated and so working now at the accounting firm um, it's made me realize I love golf I miss the game of golf whether I play competitively or not Um, and there are days where I'm like I really wish I was traveling to the Bahamas to play the first event of the year (laughs) Mm. and um and, and practicing, uh, you know, for hours uh, during the day, and um, that's something I definitely think about. And um, if the opportunity presents itself, I definitely take advantage of it because I definitely wanted to realistically leave competitive golf on my terms when I wanted to, rather than being forced to have to do it. Mm. And you know, people have to realize too. You've been at this thing since seven years old. Mm-hmm. At some point, you had to take a mental break to kind of get better, you know, mentally, you know, to get yourself refreshed. You have to take a break from it. <clears throat> but I understand what you mean about that passion. You know, for what I do, because I'm more arts-based and entertainment-based, I can't imagine being away from it for a certain amount of time and not going back into it because I'm a passion for this business that I'm trying to break into. So I know kind of how you feel about that. You know, you just, it's just something in you that has to go back to it. But you do need your breaks. And, and I had to learn, quite frankly, that you can't just burn yourself out on one thing. You have to t- step away from it sometimes and get re- get yourself refreshed so you are so you can think about what you really truly want and just go get it in again. So i like to see, you know, keep up on you on your SPN. Send you back on tour. <laughs> so that would be cool. Yeah. But, um, me. Yeah, and um, what advice would you give to the youth right now that no matter what they're doing, whether it's the arts, entertainment, sports, what advice would you give to to them right now? Um, The advice I would uh, give is to find something that you are really passionate about and focus on that and try to find happiness out of that because sometimes when things are crumbling around you, you can always go back to something that you really love. And it will take your mind off of a, a tough situation that you may be going through. Um, and I can use an example. Uh, I was, let me see, I was um, in school, uh, in college, okay? And I had a very stressful class for one semester. But on Saturdays, it wasn't scheduled practice, but I would go to the golf course to get away 
and I mm-hmm. felt rejuvenated and I felt happy and this was my sanctuary and you know that class wasn't going to be hovering over me while I'm on the first tee bound to hit my tee shot you, you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. yeah so it's like I just I feel like you have to find something that you really love doing and just dedicate yourself to it and don't let anyone change your mind about what it is that you love Okay, that's awesome advice. I know, quite frankly, that's also for advice for, you know, adults, mature adults, or whatever. Um, I think it's all about being doing what makes you happy and what you what makes you feel at peace and content, and you know, and just that escape. So, that's awesome advice. And Shasta, could you tell us how we can find you on social media so people can keep track of what you're doing and what you have going on? Yeah, um, I have a Twitter account. It is I am S Avery Hart. Uh, I need to just type in my full name. It should come up. I don't think anybody has <laughs> my first and last name in the world. So I should be able to find it on Twitter. Um, I do have a website. It is ShastaAveryHart.com. And I also have an Instagram, which is Shasta Avery Hart. So I try to keep it consistent. Um, but yeah, those are my three social media outlets. Okay, awesome. And for me right now, I'm um, I'm very very um, pleased. I think you're the first show of the year for Speak Live Nation, and uh, I want uh, the audience to really keep track of what other people we have like Shasta that's going out and doing great things out there, and definitely giving back to the communities and being an inspiration for everyone. So Shasta, I want to thank you for being on um, Speak Live Nation. Yes, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, and I enjoyed it. Okay, go, go, go. And uh, good luck to you, uh, whatever you decide to do. We speak live nations in your corner. Well, thank you. You too. Okay, and in closing, I want to thank my audience for listening to us on Speak Live Nation. You can find me on Instagram at Cedric Nettles, and you can find me on Facebook at Speaking on Speak Live Nation with Cedric Nettles, and um, also Cedric Nettles No Space on uh, Snapchat. So until we get it in again, um, thank you for joining us and have a great day.